uh, Rishi's pledge to uh, leave the ECHR if uh, his Rwanda plan doesn't get off the ground. Uh, but you pointed out... When was it he said this before? Because uh, I, I hadn't realised you'd said it before. <laughs> yeah, in uh, 2022. 20, 20, 20, there you 20, go. 2022. So, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I made a documentary uh, on the ECHR. It wasn't a major ratings uh, triumph, I have to tell you. Uh, an hour-long documentary on it in 2000... I got, I got, I got the um, uh, the WhatsApp memory... Uh, the, you know, the Facebook memory the other day came up. Did and it's you? like 13 years ago. Uh, and wow. they were talking about leaving it then under yeah. uh, Cameron and Theresa May. So, I think it's all talk. Yeah, well... It probably is. We good. have been asked... Is there any reason for Britain to stay in the European Convention on Human Rights? Give us a call 0344 499 1000 or text us 87222 or hit us on Twitter. Tweet us on X at Talk TV. And we have indeed had uh, your texts and tweets coming in this lunchtime. Uh, we have been asking, is there any reason for Britain to stay in the ECHR? And Amanda says, there is no reason we should stay in the ECHR. We are perfectly capable of devising our own rules and the whole convention needs updating. Jeff Phillips says, uh, we don't need to be a part of the ECHR. It's another Euro failure. We have our own human rights laws in the Magna Carta. It's worked fine for centuries. Christine has got in touch. She says, we don't need to be joined at the hip to work with the EU. We lead the way, supporting Ukraine. The EU is still catching up. Leaving the ECHR should have been part of Brexit. Well, Andrew says, we should not be a member of the ECHR. The other European nations do not obey its orders. So why should we? We should not obey orders from a foreign court. Uh, it's true that the other nations don't really bother with it. Well, France, they... Germany. Hang on, we've got to move on, but we'll get back to that in a minute. Rishi Sunak has threatened to quit the European Convention of Human Rights if that's what it takes to stop small boats making channel crossings. During an interview for The Sun's new politics show, Never Mind the Ballots, the Prime Minister said he would cut ties with the Euro Court if they block his Rwanda migrant plan. I believe that. Our scheme, including the Rwanda part of it, all our plans to tackle illegal migration. Let me just but answer if, the question, Harry. I believe that our plans are compliant with all our international obligations, including the ECHR. But right, I believe that border security and controlling illegal migration is more important than our membership of any foreign court. Sunak's latest warning comes amidst mounting pressure to curb channel crossings following a surge of arrivals which has seen more than 5,000 people cross from France already this year. Now, Matthew Laza, former Labour advisor, is still with us. And we're joined now by Ben Keith, who is a barrister specialising in extradition and human rights. Ben, I, I, I personally... Good, yeah, good afternoon. I personally think that we should stay um, with the ECHR. I think that's better for all of us. I think in terms of the Good Friday Agreement, to keep stability in Ireland, I think it's, it's good. I think that we need to have uh, a separate court that can actually intervene if the state is... I don't know, oppressing people and changing rules. Because, as we know, the Tory government are quite happy to change and bend the rules to fit their own narrative. So I think it's good we have this. What are the dangers for this country if we do leave? Well, we become ostracised from the international community in terms of all of our obligations, because uh, the real problem is, is that you don't just have to leave the ECHR. As our own courts have said, the Supreme Court said, you'd have to leave the Refugee Convention, you'd have to leave the Torture Convention... Um, so what? You... Why not? Why don't we leave them? I mean, we, we, the, the, the contention seems to be that if we're not in this club, the European Convention on Human Rights, suddenly we'll be torturing everyone left, right and centre, uh, we won't have fair trials. We in Britain, when we, we devised the European Convention on Human Rights, at least Winston Churchill was one of the architects of this, we know about human rights. Human rights will not die in this country if we leave the ECHR. Um... No, not necessarily, but um, everybody signed up to the Universal Declaration on Human Rights for, for, for the United Nations, and if you're, which is exactly the same wording as the European Convention. And if you're going to say, well, actually, we don't care about the European Convention, then we don't compare about, care about the Universal Declaration either. And yes, of course, the UK government try and comply with human rights, but there are real problems. I mean, we've got, there's, there's issues coming through at the moment of the UK being complicit with the Americans in the Guantanamo Bay and renditions. Um, there's issues of the of steak knife in Northern Ireland, you know, being allowed to uh, commit murder and serious um, criminal offences. And in some respects, human rights provide the last uh, bastion of protection where the government doesn't want to admit to um, problems. And there's a huge conflation between the, the 
European Court of Human Rights and the European Union, and they're not they're not the same entities. Mm -hmm. They're actually separate. One is the Council of Europe, which is the European Convention on Human Rights, and the other is the European Union. And the Council of Europe is much bigger. It has Russia, um, Georgia, Ukraine, uh, lots of countries who aren't part of the European Union, and um, us leaving that means that we are then out of all of the international law clubs. Matthew, um, people commonly say, well, if you leave the ECHR, it's just you and Russia and Belarus. You don't want to be friends with those guys. Does it matter? Yeah, I think it does matter. I mean, I think, as Kev said, this was formed after the Second World War. Winston Churchill was the, basically the architect of it. His uh, later um, uh, Home Secretary um, actually wrote the, uh, wrote the uh, constitution of it. So if we leave, we are sending a very, very bad message. But I do think we need to try and reform it. The problem we have is that we are, because we are sort of seen on the sidelines as being critical all the time, it doesn't give us much leverage to try and reform and update um, uh, wordings in some of the uh, conventions, because clearly they were, were written for a different circumstances. So, modernise, don't leave. Yeah. Uh, but, ben, ben, can we go back to that uh, point that I was making? You know, it, it, if we... The thing about the ECHR, I mean, I get your point, you know, we want to be part of the international club and we want to uh, uh, play our part on that weird concept, uh, the international stage and all that. Somewhere or other, we've all got to be globalist these days. But the ECHR uh, prevented this country... Uh, from carrying out a uh, policy by a democratically elected government, which was the Rwanda scheme. So we allowed the ECHR to come in and dictate policy in this country. That wasn't what the people voted for. So if the ECHR is going to behave like that, uh, I'd rather that we left it uh, than virtue signal that, look at us, aren't we great? We're still in the international club. But, 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 but that's not true. I mean, what you've taken is the government's narrative of what happened in the Rwandan case. There was a, an interim injunction which was given by the European Court of Human Rights because the UK decided not to give it. And that's the only thing the European Court of Human Rights have ever have done in the Rwandan cases. They haven't actually considered the merits, <clears throat> whether it's good, bad or indifferent thing to do, or whether the Rwandan policy is good or bad. They've made no decision on that. All they said was, don't remove these people until your courts until the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court have had a look at this and decided whether the policy is lawful or not. Mm. And so they stopped those people being removed. And then our courts, the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court, said, well, actually, um, this is insane to send people to Rwanda in the current circumstances because uh, Rwanda are killing refugees and torturing people. And well, that's so their contention, the, the, yeah. ECHR didn't, the ECHR didn't actually, has actually made no decisions on Rwanda other than to say to the UK, you need to give your courts the opportunity to make to make decisions on whether this is legal or not. Well, Matthew, and so there's no, there's, no, there's, there's, no, there's no case at Strasbourg in relation to the Rwandan... Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I mean, one of the classic examples is, is votes for prisoners, <clears throat> um, uh, which uh, basically uh, the uh, ECHR, the European Court, actually ruled in favour that we had to give votes to prisoners and governments have just ignored it. And, mm -hmm. and because, uh, uh, because uh, and, you know, the world has not come down on us um, uh, as a consequence. So it is uh, 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 absolutely about how British courts interpret the law um, rather than how uh, the, the Strasbourg. And it isn't a foreign court in the sense that there is a British so, justice so, so, on it. Yeah, it's a shared court. But it's still Strasbourg telling us that we must go to our own courts. You've got to do this. You've got to do this. Uh, I want to live in a well, country... We're part of it, Ken. I want to live in a country where we say to Strasbourg, uh, do one. Don't we're you like working together what... internationally? That's why we've got NATO and other international I don't particularly care about working together internationally. Oh, you're I, want, I want this country to... <laughs> Not even Scotland. I want, this country, <laughs> I want this country to govern itself. Why is Strasbourg telling us what to because do? Because part of governing yourself is deciding when it's better to share power in your national interest. Yeah, well, which uh, is why we're in NATO. Which is why we're in the United Nations. It's not better to share power. Well, hang on. He's been... I mean... He might, have been anyway. he might do. You know, we've had 14 yeah. years of them saying we're going to leave, we're going to leave, we're not going to leave. Yeah. Matthew... I'll bring Ben back in. Uh, ben, can you just uh, g give us, like, I don't know, three examples of why people in Britain should be grateful to be in the ECHR? What does it do? I mean, for example, the ECHR enshrines the right to a fair trial. It enshrines the right to privacy. I mean, we enshrine that already. Why do we need some European court to tell us to do what we're already doing? Well, but, but but we don't enshrine it already, and that's that's part of the we issue. We don't enshrine in the... the right to a fair trial. We do now, but, oh, but well, remember... We, we didn't we... until we joined the uh, ECHR. Let him answer! Well, in, 19, in 1951, remember. So the, 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 we, we, we signed the convention in a long, long time ago, and the, the, the 1997 Act only gave what's called direct effect to the human rights. Mm. 
uh, convention. So we've always, we've been a member for a very, very long time. And prior to that, there was no internationally recognised standards of what a fair trial meant. And there's huge, you know, France has a completely different legal system to us, but they have fair trials and we have fair trials. We use a jury, other systems don't. And so there's a huge margin of appreciation, margin of error. And actually, the, the UCHR tend to, to rule in front, uh, rule in favour of the United Kingdom. I mean, I've, I've taken cases to the European Court of Human Rights on a number of occasions uh, for individuals, and I've lost all of them so far. <laughs> um, of but but, but um, they were considered properly, and the UK has observed, you know, observed the court's uh, jurisdiction. And in fact, the UK has lost very, very few cases before the European Convention on Human Rights. And all the discussion about it needs reforming is actually how the government and then the courts in the UK interpret the convention. It's not about what the Strasbourg court does because very, very few cases, I mean, tens of cases go to Europe each year, which are accepted by the uh, by Strasbourg and the UK lose perhaps one or two at most. Hmm. Fair um, enough, Ben. Fair enough. We lose uh, fewer than a lot of most other countries. Matthew, isn't this more a case of our government using a distraction tactic. Absolutely. They're trying to other and blame the Euro It's the Europeans. Absolutely. They're the ones at fault here. Absolutely. It's always somebody else's fault. It's whether the SNP are blaming the English, particularly Kev, um, <laughs> uh, or, or this government is blaming anybody, particularly foreign judges. It's not the ECHR's fault to stop the boats. It's the incompetence of this, of this government. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but the ECHR is the one that told us that we couldn't uh, take that plane off. Well, they, they still haven't got the legislation so, through. Uh, and next, next Labour time, said they'd come back from holiday. Next time the ECHR, some taxi rack judge in Strasbourg, <laughs> says to us, you can't can't take that plane off. We should do what France and Germany do in those circumstances and say, thanks very much to the ECHR. <laughs> We're now going to ignore you. We're like the good kids in the classroom who do what they're told. Ben, uh, anyway, Ben, uh, Ben, uh, ben <laughs> thank Keith, you. thank you so much for your time. Good talking to you. Thank you.